Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, I'll look at the markets first, but uh, the general uh, theme of this video is the big shift. And what is the big shift? Well, it's the uh, economic and political power shift from the developed world to the developing world. And you might ask, what is that? Well, that's what the power elites have been planning for many decades. Uh, I've uh, spoken about this speech before that James Wolfenson, the, the former World Bank president, made at Stanford Graduate Business School over 10 years ago uh, on January uh, 29th, 2010. Uh, and in this speech, uh, Wolfenson claimed that in the next 40 years, a global power shift will see today's leading economic countries drop from having 80% of the world's income to 35%. So uh, it might sound outlandish, but I'll come to it in a minute. Uh, let's first look at the markets. The markets are looking fairly interesting, especially gold and silver. Uh, it's 8.53 a.m. London. Right now, gold is just testing 1750. It's up about five dollars. The high's been 1753, the low's been 1743. Uh, silver has done very well today, but uh, in the last 10 minutes, it's come off. The gold silver ratio did drop below a uh, hundred uh, earlier uh, overnight. Right now, silver is at 1735, only up two. So we're actually seeing silver drop back. The high has been 1763. So it looks like that that hundred level uh, is very important. We drop below it, but we're uh, back uh, above it now. Um, stock market, of course, yesterday gave back a little bit of its gains from the previous day. The Dow dropped 390 yesterday, or 1.6%. Today, the stock markets, uh, the futures, uh, are back up a little bit. The Dow is up 150 or two-thirds of a percent. S&P, uh, likewise, two-thirds of a percent higher. And the NASDAQ 100. The currencies, uh, sterling is down 0.2 of a percent at 122.25. The euro is up 0.17 of a percent at 109.42. Dollars unchanged against the yen. Uh, crude oil, WTI, is down half a percent at 3181 uh the 10-year yield is down a couple basis points and it's back below 70 basis points right now at 0.69 so the big shift what is that all about well i've been listening to uh, some videos from a, a youtube channel called peerless reads i'm gonna put a link to this channel below in the description uh, this guy is based in the UK. He's very good. He's like a, what you call a, a polymath. He has a lot of uh, specialities. Uh, he's an author. He's a pilot. He's a financier. I think he's worked in the city of London. Uh, but uh, he's looking at the statistics uh, for this current health crisis. And one of the things he notes is how a lot of the deaths are happening uh, in Western Europe, especially the countries uh, around the EU, the big EU countries, uh, the UK and the United States, and especially uh, New York, the state of uh, New York, uh, where New York City is based, of course. And he kind of uh, sees something there. And uh, he also notes how uh, this crisis in Asia has been really not as big in terms of deaths uh, as it has been in Western Europe and North America. And he's right, because if you look at this uh, website, uh, it's tracking uh, the C virus. Uh, and this has been going on since the beginning. Uh, I'll put a link to, to this as well in the description. You look at... Uh, where the big circles are. The big circles are, of course, the cases and the deaths. Uh, and you see how concentrated in North America and Western Europe it is. And look at how small these circles are. Uh, 
in the rest of the world or the emerging market or the third world, uh, whatever you want to call it, or the developing world. And, uh, and then I thought about James Wolfenson's uh, speech, which I've covered before in videos uh, that I've done. Uh, I don't remember the last time I, I spoke about it. But uh, yeah, in this speech, uh, this former president of the, the World Bank says that the big shift is coming and globalization was part of this big shift. Um, and uh, I think the globalization now, uh, the agenda of globalization, uh, they're going to put it to bed, but they needed to move this uh, big shift forward. And I think this health crisis if you look at uh, that uh, world map I showed you, it just goes to show that uh, this is part of the big shift, in my opinion. And why? Because it's going to hamper the economy of the developed world, of the Western countries, of North America. I think it's going to be a, a massive blow, uh, especially with all the debt that um, the US, the UK, and the EU are taking in order to... Uh, basically bail out, in my opinion, uh, a lot of the uh, Wall Street, City of London, and big European international banks. And it's going to be a big, uh, how can I say, um, drag on incomes, on the prosperity of the developed world. It's going to mean uh, more of a command economy. Uh, and when you have a command economy, the private sector uh, shrinks uh, and we know that wealth is really created by the private sector and you look at this map again Africa almost uh, no effect in, in Africa of this health uh, crisis you look at uh, Southeast Asia very little I mean uh, compared to their populations look at China and some people say that China are lying about the data but uh, if you look at uh, South Korea, Japan, Philippines, uh, even India, uh, it's almost not very significant, this crisis. So I think uh, what this will do is this will help <laughs> uh, economically uh, the emerging markets, the developing world uh, in the future. And by future, I mean 10, 20 years, as Mr. Wolfenson said, this is a 40-year plan, and he said that back in 2010. And I think that what that will do, even though globalization is not going to be as strong as it has been in the last 20 years, uh, it's going to put the uh, Western countries, the developed world, at a disadvantage uh, to uh, the emerging markets. And uh, what's the reason James Wolfenson gives for this strategy of the powers that be because if you uh, have been doing a little bit of research you know that uh, the institution uh, of the World Bank and IMF and the United Nations and the WHO they're all linked together uh, their objective I think according to James Wolfenson is that uh, the Western world and the developed world uh, was too wealthy <laughs> and, and too prosperous and that uh, this wealth needed to be redistributed to uh, the developing world. Am I saying this is right to do this by design? Because this is basically uh, kind of socialism, international socialism. You're, you're uh, transferring the wealth from uh, the developed uh, nations to the developing nations, I think it is. Am I saying it's right? No, I, I think it's wrong. But uh, we need to be aware that this is their goal. And uh, I highly recommend you listen to his uh, speech. It's over 50 minutes. And I highly recommend you listen to Peerless Reads, especially his last uh, videos. Uh, you might want to listen to more of his videos. He's very interesting. He looks at uh, charts, statistics uh, about uh, this health virus. And he makes it clear that uh, the Western countries, for some reason, uh, especially New York, uh, UK, and Brussels, he calls the EU countries Brussels, uh, 
uh, the cases have been abnormally high compared to to Asia, and that's why it triggered in my mind uh, this idea that this is part of a bigger plan. Yes, there are other agendas that we know about uh, that they want to bring in from this crisis, but the bigger picture, I think the really big picture, is shifting the wealth from west to east, basically, or from north to south as well, from the rich countries to the developing countries. And I think they're doing a good job of that. Uh, and uh, you just have to look at the headlines every day. Today, we, we got a new headline here in the UK from the FT. It says, Rolls Royce to cut 9,000 jobs to prepare for years of disruption. UK aero engine maker has been hit by plunging demand from aircraft makers. So Rolls-Royce is to cut nearly a fifth of its workforce as it prepares for disruption to the aviation industry caused by the uh, pandemic to last for several years. The other story I saw the other day in the Telegraph, uh, I bought the Telegraph and I, I, I cut the article clip of it. It says, Economy, this is in the UK again, and the same thing is happening in the US. I'm not going to go into the politics of it in the US. Um, I'm just looking at the numbers and what's happening. It says, economy is unlikely to bounce back. OBR admits. So let's go through this article quickly. The economy is likely to see a slower recovery from the C virus than initially anticipated. The Office of the Office for Budget Responsibility has admitted, rowing back on its original suggestion of a V-shaped model, Robert Choate, the body's chairman, said it was likely the economy would not be bouncing back. The OBR had previously suggested that the UK's GDP would drop by 35% before returning to similar levels seen before the outbreak in 2021. Mr. Choate said, the economic challenges posed by the virus would certainly lead to higher borrowing and warn of the scarring effect on the economy. This is another word they're using, scarring, uh, the scarring effect. And uh, you can bet this is like a social distancing. It, it's a term that uh, you're hearing more and more. The mainstream economists, the central bankers, uh, the mainstream press, they're all talking about scarring. <laughs> as if it was uh, related to a disease. Uh, they don't look at the fact that uh, the uh, powers that be have been inflating a debt bubble for, for decades in the West, in the developed world. And I think this is the big agenda, shifting economic power shift from West to East, if you want to call it, or from the uh, developed to the developing world. So there you go. The big shift is coming. I think it's here right now. It's being accelerated. Yes, you might ask, well, but this is going to end globalization. Yes, it, it is ending globalization to some extent, and that won't help uh, the uh, developing nations as it did uh, in the past, but they don't need it anymore. All the manufacturing uh, all the uh, technology has been already shifted to these countries, and now they're left with very little uh, debt. Uh, and uh, while the West is lumbered with generational debt. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing uh, to the channel if you haven't yet. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.